Today, we look at Chloe Tanner and the first major suicide in the Degrassi universe. We also take a good look at Peter, why he got so lucky with not being punished for his crimes. And we learn about Albert Manning and what effect Craig would be under if Albert still was alive. All this and more in episode 4 of Degrassi What Ifs. Degrassi What Ifs, and this is episode four. So, first of all, I thank everyone for their continued stuff and all that. So, anyway, this is the first scenario. Now, it now this is not a next generation onwards, what if this is basically the original Degrassi in a sense. You know, people forget that there's Degrassi High and Junior High. But then, of course, you got to realize that um, basically, you know, the OGs and all that. Yes, yes, we all know that the OGs basically were shot upon minus Snake in the Next Generation era. But anyway, in Degrassi High, with Joey and Caitlin breaking up again, Caitlin was interested in this guy named Chloe Tanner who liked movies, likes the environment, he's cute. You really think a guy with his hair tied back and a mustache is cute and all that? That's David Seaman, 2002, England, World Cup. Creepy. But anyway, I'm not really here to talk about that. I'm talking about, um, Claude. So anyway, Claude and Caitlin decide to protest against an animal testing facility. Unfortunately, Claude and Caitlin get caught, and Claude basically runs off, leaving Caitlin high and dry with the trespassing charges. Caitlin basically has to serve community service and basically is upset with Claude. Claude has had some major problems of his own. His parents just can't get along with each other, and both his parents don't really seem to want him. So, basically, Claude isn't sure what to do and all that. And Claude continues to try to get Caitlin back in his life because he feels bad for what he did to Caitlin, but he basically was a freaking coward. So, anyway. Yeah, Claude was a terrible person, in a sense. He was going through some depressionary stuff. Joanne tried to help, but Claude didn't seem to care. Basically, after Caitlin spurned his advances, and the fact that Claude could not do his macabre poem at the talent show, and all that, Claude figured he was basically going to kill himself. So he decides to take a gun to into the bathroom and shoot himself. Now apparently you can hear a gunshot go off in the background of the scene at Mr. Volfish's English class. Of course, the English class that they were talking about Macbeth and basically Snake hiding to go to the bathroom. Snake goes to the bathroom and after, and assuming he went to the bathroom, he basically realizes that there's a guy in the stall. And he, with his legs out, and doesn't look too good. Snake basically pushes the door open, and then it goes, <laughs> and runs away. Radich is basically talking to his secretary about the exam schedule, and Radich gets bumped into by Snake. Well, remember, Radich is not principal. He's vice principal of Degrassi High. And basically, Snake and Radich talk about these things. And Radich realizes that Snake's not okay, and he's quivering. And basically, they both run and find... Claude dead. So basically, the police have to section off the bathroom. So anyway, Claude basically is dead and all that. And then everyone is talking about an impact of Claude. Caitlin's in the same class as Lucy and all that. Lucy makes the point that he basically killed himself to make us look bad because, you know, Claude went through a lot of bad stuff. Basically, he killed himself to shame us, the students, in a sense. Meanwhile, Joanne is trying to talk to Mr. Radich when he takes over one of the classes and basically says that I've done so much for him and all that. And Radich says, I don't know what you could have, else, how much more you could have done for him, Joanne. And then Trish, you know, the one with the mohawk, spiky mohawk, basically 
comforts her. And then Radich basically makes a great speech that makes him look so nice. He says, everybody feels overwhelmed sometimes, but the best thing to do is not to kill ourselves because once we do, everything is over and there's no turning back. I mean, he was calm, cool, and collective. But I think Radich in the background was upset that there was a suicide on his school grounds. So basically, everyone's talking about this thing. Uh, who is Joe? Who is K Lucy's boyfriend? LT, not LT. Uh, Bronco. That's it. Yeah, Bronco says he felt bad about not letting um, Claude perform his poem, thinking that that sent him over. But Lucy said, "I don't think that's what happened." Caitlin ends up getting rose white carnations, from, white roses from Claude. With the flowers and all that. And basically she rips up the note. She's upset. Basically she's affected by Claude. Because Claude's in her dreams basically trying to get at her. Joey basically tells Caitlin that basically you shouldn't feel any guilt over what Claude did. Claude loved you high and dry. Claude basically didn't care about you. He just was obsessed with you and all that. And basically, you know, he was probably killing himself to try to make you look better. That basically put things on you. So basically, Caitlin realizes she has to learn to be okay and all that. They still put on their talent show in the in the in the wake of Claude's suicide. But Spike comes up with the bright idea to do it like a benefit for bully teens and all that. I mean, for teens for a suicide hotline and all that. And basically, it goes off without a hitch. Well, one little hitch is that Joey and Snake were going to do some kind of Nice routine while well, saying everybody wants something. But with Snake being traumatized by seeing Claude's dead body, Wheels fills in for him. Wheels, of course, having some issues with Joey and Snake after basically being kicked out of his grandparents' place and basically him not taking responsibility for things and all that. But he starts working at places and gives money to Joey to make up for what he stole from her. From her, that being Joey's mom. Of course, the big what if is what if Claude was not such a jerk to Caitlin? Now, you gotta look at it a few points of view. Would Claude and Caitlin be a power couple, or would basically something might trip them up? In my sense, I think something would have tripped those two up. Joey, I don't think, was obsessed with getting Caitlin back. But I think that Claude, with his obsessiveness, a seemingly towards Caitlin. Things could be a little bit bad and all that. I like Caitlin. But in fact, you know, things happen. For Caitlin, I mean, the a lot of her of seeing her be affected by someone's suicide who was obsessed with her got her puzzled and all that. But Joey basically told Caitlin that he's the jerk, not you. Why are you? crying over this guy. Obviously, he did it to try to get at you and basically try to get you off your game. So then, of course, you got yourself the thinking that, you know, Claude's suicide actually may have been a character development for Caitlin. Not so much. But, I mean, if Claude was still alive, you know, Claude could have still been a character that basically didn't fit in to the Degrassi mold and all that. I doubt that Claude and Caitlin would have lasted longer than we all think they did. But, you know, you never know. So, anyway, that's that one. Next up is number two. And that is basically the one about Peter. Now, as we all know about Peter, in season five, he was introduced to the show, and basically he had a fondness for Manny instead of Emma, who actually wanted to be with him. Manny did everything in her power to try to get Peter to date Emma, but Peter wanted Manny because of her actress stuff. Basically, Manny gets drunk and makes a topless video of herself. I'm going to be famous. But anyway, um, Peter basically decides... That since Manny won't date him, the ransom is $3,000 so that he doesn't um, release the video to everybody. It's the cost of the camera after 
it, Manny smashes it. Three thousand dollars for a camera? Are you nuts? So anyway, basically he frames her, and Manny can't come up with the cash. So basically, Peter sends it all around the school, and everyone just laughs and judges Manny. Emma is upset by this, but then Manny, Emma finally realizes that Manny was the victim and Peter was the bad guy, and basically helps Manny out. Manny is kicked it to the curb by her parents. Emma lets her stay at their place for the time being, and basically, you know, they promise not to keep secrets from each other. Of course, we all know that blown up. But it's like, how did Peter get away with this? And all that. And in season six, when Sean comes back in the picture, somehow, you know, making Emma question why she was with Peter. And, you know, Sean, Sean wasn't much of a threat, but Manny told Peter that basically Emma and Sean had a, had a friendship with each other for a few seasons. So basically, Peter feels worried. Emma doesn't give him a straight answer. Who would you rather be, with, me or Sean? And so basically, he decides to take matters into his own hands, frames Sean with drugs in the locker. Sean's upset <clears throat> because obviously, you know, he wouldn't have drugs in his locker. And he pinpoints Peter because he knows Peter's mom is principal. Of course, I didn't mention that in the first part. Is that we found out that Peter's mom is Hasselakos. What? So anyway, so anyway, Peter... Does that? They do a street race. Peter and Sean get in trouble. Peter just gets community service. Sean goes to jail. Emma feels conflicted until Manny and Jay basically set Emma straight and basically that Peter is scum. And then basically Peter is found out to be scum after he puts a mask in Emma's locker. And Emma's like, I never gave you the combination. You don't have to. I knew it from my mom. And basically Emma then realizes that he put the drugs in Sean's locker to frame Sean. He said, what I did, I did for the relationship. Peter basically screws everything up, and Emma basically tells Peter where to get off. And so logically, you know, she tells Peter never to be around her ever again. Peter goes on to some weird relationships with Darcy and Mia, but anyway. But the problem is, basically, Peter... Getting away, not once, but twice with crimes of human nature. So you're going to be asking yourself, how did Peter get over this? Basically, like, he's scum and all that. Simple, simply put, I believe that he played on Hatzalakos maternal instincts more so than her principal instincts. So basically, Hatzalakos was more of a mom than a principal at times, and that's scary. To, you know, you're a principal and all that, and your child goes to the same school. And probably that child gets in trouble because they think that the child gets special treatment. But no. But yeah, Peter got special treatment and all that. Now the question on everyone's lips is, what if Peter got in trouble for what he did to Manny and Emma? Now, it was told that he was given many detentions by Hatzel Ackles for his crime and all that. But why didn't she suspend him or expel him? Even an expulsion would have been nice. Or a suspension. That would have been fair. But yeah, he played on his mother's maternal instincts. Peter just basically played everyone like a fiddle. So basically, yeah. Peter, if he got expelled, I doubt he would have had another chance. He probably would have got another chance and he probably would have blown it with this whole Sean situation. That's what I feel. I also think that basically, you know, Sean sh Peter should have been expelled the second time, especially in season six, because, you know, he framed Sean for drugs. He basically um, got lucky with the street racing thing because Sean hit the guy and all that. He got lucky because his dad actually worked with a judge for, for plea deals, so basically Peter didn't have to serve too much time. <laughs> Sending Sean to jail. He basically he basically played Emma like a fiddle. Poor Emma, I mean, geez. And practically, you know, he practically put the mask in Emma's locker and admitted that he framed Sean. It's like, how come Sean how come Sean never went back to Degrassi and how come Peter never got any other problems? I've, 
after the fact. But there is the new thing that uh, after Peter confessed to Emma about the mask in the locker, Snake said that he would t talk to Hetzelakos on behalf of Sean, letting Sean back into Grassy. But Sean's like, probably never going to happen, especially with the fact that he knows that Hetzelakos won't listen to him. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Peter didn't really get in much trouble. I mean, Emma should have, Emma should have done something too. Emma should have told Hatzalakos, even though that she was like, Peter won't tell Hatzalakos. So she told, she would have told Hatzalakos off and basically saying that Peter is scum. You should do something about it. And then Hatzalakos would have done something about it because she would feel the wrath of Emma and Simpson. But yeah, Peter would have been probably expelled the second time, especially with the drugs in the locker. I mean, like, how the heck did Peter get his hands on drugs? And why would Hatzalakos keep them at the school? And, or maybe she kept them and the police didn't find them. The police were supposed to look for something. I was like, what the fuck, Sean? What the fuck, Peter? I mean, seriously. Why would you do that? So yeah, I think Peter would probably have been knocked off as a character and basically Darcy would have had another issue with her problems in season seven. Anyway, Emma. Notwithstanding, yeah. So anyway, that's number two. Alright, on to number three in this video. And this one is about I hate laughing look at my sheet. Yeah, Albert Manning. So basically in season two we're introduced to a new character named Craig, who basically is a Nice guy, and basically who Emma and Manny have eyes on. Unfortunately, we learn that Craig's home life sucks as his father basically gets aggressive with him, basically beats him, mostly without good reason. And basically Craig is upset and all that. Albert breaks Craig's camera and then realizes that he's wrong, so he gives Craig money to buy a camera. So Craig thinks about it, but then he talks to Angie, who actually ends up being Joey's daughter and basically they said they want to go to BC together. It was like this random girl? Why would Craig want to hang out with a girl in An like Angie and go to BC? That's troubling. Joey doesn't see the point. But then when jo uh, Craig and Sean are walking around the tracks, rural tracks, Craig decides to stand on the tracks with a skateboard in hand. Sean thinks that he's playing chicken and says it's not funny. But thankfully, though, Sean saves Craig from everything. And, of course, Craig almost got killed by the train. And that's when we find out about Craig being delusional and all that. Joey is basically not understanding. However, Emma and Sean realize, uh, tell Relay to J Joey that basically he, Craig's dad is the problem after all that. And Angie tells about how he had a purple... Thing, uh, bump and he said it was from a dinosaur and then Joey realized that Craig was in trouble and he and we learn we actually learn the the truth when Emma sees a picture that she enjoys but it, it finds out that Craig's mom actually left Albert to be with Joey they got married they had Angie and then basically she died of some terminal disease or something so Craig's mom is that, and basically it might be that Albert is beating up on Craig to get his anger out about his wife leaving him. And basically with his wife dead, he couldn't go after, he had needed to go after someone else. So yeah, so basically Albert's not too pleased with that. But then Albert pops up in, man, in Craig's life in the second last episode of season two, basically saying that he, losing Craig was the big wake up call. He's been to therapy, he's been in a support group, and he's done a lot better. He seems to be okay, but when Craig forgets a dinner date with his dad on fr on a Friday, basically, Albert is mad and punches Craig out and basically doesn't want to be around Craig. Craig lashes out at him, saying something to Albert behind his back. And then the next day, we learn that Albert somehow got in a car crash and died. And Craig doesn't know how to process it. So basically, Craig decides to come into school the next, like on the Monday, and realizes that summer vacation is not there. We got to do something about it. So basically, you know, they do it and all that. And in the background of 
standing up for the little dance. But here, Radish basically tell Craig that there's no pressure coming into school because, you know, Radish knew about Craig's dad being dead and all that. And basically said that there would be no punishment. The teachers will obviously know about Craig's issues and basically won't fail him and all that. The good thing about Raj is that he's there for students when they lose somebody close, especially Wills' adoptive parents and all that. I think it was season three of, yeah, it was season three of junior high because he was still teacher. So he went to the funeral of Craig Manning. Craig acts, of Albert Manning. Craig asks, acts all stupid like, and everyone's like shocked about what Craig's behavior was like. But Craig says, he's dead. I should be happy that my tormentor is dead. So basically, Craig goes through a lot of issues. He hallucinates his dad cheering for him when he and Ashley are named Luella King and Queen. I think because of sympathy. So basically, he goes after him, and then he just starts destroying stuff. Nothing too major, but he destroys like banners and all that, and everyone wants to stop him. Raj says, no, no, let him out of it, have it out of his system. So basically, he does. And Terry... Bless her heart, basically cheers him up saying that she went through a terrible experience. She was at a friend's birthday party when her dad told her that her mom died in a crash. So basically she couldn't do a lot of things. Craig is understandably okay, but he's like, I hated the guy. He abused me. But why do I feel strange feelings about him? Because you loved him. And Craig is puzzled. Craig apologizes profusely to the school, I think. And basically, he and Ashley have a dance and everything is hunky-dory. But of course, this what-if is basically, what if Albert Manning hadn't died? Oh, the things that could could happen to Craig. There are several things that could have happened. For one thing, Albert probably would have forced Craig back into his home from Joey and basically... Craig might have been so hurt he's in the hospital, and Albert Manning would have been put behind bars for what he did. Also, maybe Albert stalks Craig, trying to get him back and all that, but Craig doesn't want Albert back in his life and all that. Maybe Albert is just plotting to get Craig back by hook or crook. But yeah, this Albert Manning thing, it actually developed... Craig's character decently because, you know, we find out about how Craig has some issues. In season three, you know, he had that relationship with Manny that got Manny pregnant. And then Craig is like, I need this. I want to raise this kid and all that. Of course, the reason why he's doing it is because he doesn't really have much in the way of family. His dad's dead. His mom's dead. Well, he actually doesn't really praise Joey all that much. It just ticks me off. It's like, you know, he doesn't treat Joey as well as he should with Craig. And then, of course, season four, he gets bipolar after an episode when he almost destroys his Ashley's gay, dad's gay wedding and all that. And, and Snake basically tells Joey that he feels Craig's got some issues that have been passed down from dear old dad. And that's true, but he's bipolar and all that. So, yeah, Craig spins out of control in a sense. But, you know, this... Albert Manning thing basically led to Craig's problems being diagnosed, and that's amazing. Unlike Esme, whose problems were not really diagnosed and all that. So anyway, uh, that's all I've got for this What Ifs episode, so see you next time.